Well, hi folks, meteorologist Michael Wilhite here with Southern Indiana Weather. I want to bring you a uh, little bit of an early winter preview here. Uh, what can we expect through the winter? First, just really quickly, let's get some weekend stuff here out of the way. If you're heading out on Saturday and Sunday this weekend, rain chance is pretty low, but it's going to be very, very hot. All right, here's what future radar sort of looks like, and you can see here on Saturday, really nothing much going on. Maybe an isolated storm on Saturday or Sunday at best. Nothing much really to worry about. Some more spotty stuff as we head into maybe Monday. It's just going to be hot. Temperatures in the 90s again. Reality uh, heat uh, advisories in effect for the area. So just uh, sort of, uh, you know, take it easy if you head outdoors and bring plenty of fluids with you. Good news is the... Uh, the uh, heat will retreat. There's the ridge of high pressure out to uh, our west there. And as we put the uh, 500 millibar charts into motion, the ridge retreats. It stays out west. And then by the time later in the next week comes on, we've got what we call the northwest flow coming back the ridge out west. And then we've got trothing coming down over the east. Our flow of wind and the jet streams coming down here from the northwest. You see all these little uh, shadings of yellow and orange coming over that. And that's pieces of energy in the jet stream. That also means with those frequently returning over us with this northwest flow, that means it's going to put us back into a very active weather pattern with plenty of storm chances. Again, you can go to southernindianaweather.com and click on 10-day forecast, and that's what you can see. we got a couple of days, uh, pleasant days with nothing coming up, but more uh, rain than anything. But the good news is some 90s for the weekend, and then it's, well, hello 80s and maybe even some mid-80s as we head later on into the outlook after that. That'll be a nice change compared to where we have been. All right. So let's get into the early winter forecast. Every July, I like to do a, an uh, early winter uh, forecast preview for you. It's just something I like to do as I'm starting uh, my forecasting process for the winter. This is very preliminary. By the way, if you want to read a little bit more about this, you can go to the uh, blog on southernindianaweather.com and find, and you just click on blog up here, and then you'll find early winter 2016-17 forecast preview on there. I'm going to go over a lot of these things today, but I got some descriptions typed up out of it as well, and you'll be able to uh, check that out, folks, and uh, get a little bit more. In fact, uh, you might even be watching this from the bottom of that blog. I don't have it on there yet, but I'm, once this video is recorded, we'll put it down at the bottom of that blog as well. If you're going from YouTube, though, be sure to, if you're watching from YouTube directly, go to southernindianaweather.com, and you can get a little bit more details on that from here. Now, let's get right into it then. Let's talk about the uh, winter. Uh, well, you know the last winter that we had fairly mild around here and it's of course because it was dominated by El Nino well what exactly is El Nino El Nino is uh, down in here and it's an abnormal warming of water down in that equatorial region of the Pacific um, it's not what we have now El Nino is dead and you know what you notice that we have now is these cooler waters starting to come in here. This is what we call La Nina starting to form. La Nina is sort of like the uh, uh, little sister to El Nino, whereas El Nino is an abnormal warming of those waters in that particular region. La Nina is an abnormal cooling of those waters in that region, all relative to normal, of course, what temperatures it should be normally this time of the year. Uh, if it's if it is normal waters, normal uh, we just call it neutral. Sometimes it's called La Nada because it's it's nothing. There's just no El Nino or La Nina, just neutral conditions. That's not the only thing that we look at in a winter forecast, though, too. You've also got to keep in mind on these abnormally warm waters up here in the Gulf of Alaska. This is what we call a warm PDO, a Pacific Decadal Oscillation. Uh, that's the warm blob that has given us some cold winters in the past. It's still there. It was there last year, too. Why did it not give us a, warm, a cold winter last year, though? Well, it's uh, very simple. El Nino was here, and El Nino overpowered its effects. So then, is La Nina going to overpower this effects? We'll talk about that here in a second. And, of course, some of the other things I look at is the warm waters off of the Gulf of Mexico here and then off of the coast, and then this, uh, what we call the AMO, the Atlantic Multicle Decadal Oscillation up here as well. All these things I look at whenever I'm building a winter forecast, but primarily we're going to focus on this and this today because I think that'll be the uh, most important ones, at least for our shorter discussion that we're going to have here. Now, La Nina is starting to form, but it's been very up and down, just to be uh, you know quite honest here. So here was our big El Nino up in here, and let's just keep in mind here what El Nino and La Nina is. El Nino is anything over this 0.5 degree line, and then La Nina is uh, anything 
uh, below this negative 0.5 degree line, but it's got to stay there consistently for three months in order for it to be classified as anything. So here's what we've got going on. El Nino died. It's gone, but we've been into this kind of up and down pattern. There was El Nino. Whoa, we started to go into Nina. Oh, that didn't last long. Oh, way back to El Nino, and then, oh, Nina, Nino neutral and up and down up and down but consistently now since uh the beginning of july here we have been in uh trending towards nina status and we've been going down down until this last little observation right there and it may be that the trend line is to sort of go back up again it's all highly dependent on the soi southern oscillation index whenever we get a big crash in the index sometimes you will see these uh, big spikes and dips down uh, sometimes they recover though and i think that's what you're going to see is it start to go back up it's kind of a yo-yo pattern and i think that's what you're going to see here it's just el nino is not really or la nina rather it's just not really getting its grip on things yet it's a, giving an earnest attempt to develop but it is just not there yet well, what would a La Nina mean for us? In, under a normal circumstance, a normal La Nina pattern, it would be warm and wet for us. Sort of wet here across the Ohio Valley and then warm over much of the uh, eastern half of the country here, except the very top tier of it where the jet stream is going through. Definitely cool up here and then probably uh, cold up in here in this area as well because of being north of uh, the primary part of the jet stream. That's a typical La Nina pattern, but the problem is we're going to be in anything from a typical Nina pattern because, as I said, we've got this to contend with, but we've also got this over here, this warm PDO to contend with. Last year, of course, El Nino developed so intense that it just overpowered the warm PDO, and we felt very little effects from this. It was primarily El Nino. So if we develop into a strong La Nina again, that certainly could uh, affect us in that same way. And we may see this pattern. Well, let's just take a look at some of the modelings. The JAMS Tech model is arguably been one of the, the uh, best models in recent years for winter forecasting. Here's what it was saying back in its June 1st model run. And it was giving here, well, just take a look at this, a very strong, a pretty strong to moderate here, uh, La Nina down here in the Pacific. Still pretty warm waters up in here, uh, but this was extremely strong down here. And as a result of that, look what it did. It just burned almost all of the country here with uh, warm temperatures over the winter. That's, that's looking pretty similar to a typical La Nina pattern that I show you. However, there is a problem in recent times. Here's what the modeling is saying about La Nina. And let's just throw on some things on here again. Here is, remember, there's your La Nina status here. This is in three months periods august september october september october november december january february you get it i think you can read what those are um, but look what the modeling is now doing here let me change the color on my uh so we can see it a little bit better uh what it's kind of doing is split here you've got several models right down in here saying we're going to go into a weak la nina which is anything less than negative one uh, only a couple of models suggesting it goes into the moderate to strong category here again those are the outliers even that much, look at this, even more of them are suggesting that we stay in the neutral side, on the cool side of neutral, sure, but neutral conditions. So the modeling is split right now. Do we even see a La Nina? At this point, the best guess that we can say is it looks like it's going to be weak at best if the modeling is right. Now, of course, the modeling could be wrong. In another month or two from now, things could change if La Nina does start to get its act together. But the way things look right now, it's like it's going to be a, probably a, la, a weak La Nina at best and neutral conditions really just as uh, possible out there. So whenever I'm building my forecast right now, one of the things I got to look for is weak El Ninos and neutral conditions as well that sort of match the, uh, the conditions of what we're seeing in the ocean right now. All right. Here's what I want to show you, though. Look what the latest Jams Tech model did. I showed you this one. This one was from June. Look how strong that La Nina was. Now look at the latest one. Look how weaker that, that big boy is. They have really weakened it down here. In fact, it's, it's a very weak at best to uh, more cool side of neutral than anything here. And look what it did up in here. It strengthened that PDO again. Because this is weaker, it allowed the warm PDO to continue to be really strong. Compare that warm PDO right here to last month's. Oh, yeah, it strengthened significantly. What kind of an effect would that have on the winter? 
well, what do you think? What have we been saying here? If you have a warm PDO that's going to overpower this because this is so weak, what do you get in the eastern U.S.? You get colder temperatures. Look what the modeling is now doing. The modeling now gives you those colder temperatures as a result of that. Well, is there any support from this from the analogs? An analog is then what I look at to say historical conditions in the past, in the past winters, what historical conditions have matched the ocean conditions of what we're seeing. When I throw my top five analogs together, this is what I get for temperatures. And those temperatures then end up being just pretty chilly across the United eastern part of the United States with warmth in the west. That's kind of a repeat of some of the cold winters that we have seen around here. All right. Now, I can't tell you, unfortunately, how much snow you're going to have in your backyard. I can't even guarantee you that it's going to be a colder than normal winter. What I can say at this point in time, folks, is that there are some things in the early preliminaries of this winter forecast that looks favorable for a cold winter with potential for some increased snow. I can't say that with any definite right now. Let's remember, this is early. It is only July. All right. I'll have another update out to this with a preliminary winter forecast out in September. And my final winter forecast doesn't get released into early, no, early November. Because one of the things that I look at in the final winter forecast is the snow buildup in October in Siberia. That can help us predict the Arctic Oscillation, whether it's going to go negative and we'll have frequent cold air intrusions. There are some other things. I want to look at the patterns in the jet stream from here till now when I release that final winter forecast in November. So there's a lot of variables that go into this. Keep in mind, this is just my early thoughts. But nonetheless, the early thoughts right now are looking favorable if you like colder and snowier weather. Now, let me say this, though. All right, let me moderate this just for the sense of reality. What happens if La Nina becomes stronger than what some of the modeling now is expecting it? What if it is the little, uh, little engine that could of La Nina's? then you end up with this. This is what a weak La Nina would do if there's no warm PDO. This is what a Nina would, uh, this, and this is what this is, this is all of the weak La Nina years combined into one. Now, 8384 is my strongest analog right now, and that was a very cold year, but the rest of these were not cold years, and it overpowers that, and, and the eastern half of the country just burns with warmth. All right, that's very typical of what you see here on what a La Nina is because of that. So if La Nina decides that, hey, I think I'm going to increase my strength, I think I'm going to get a little bit warmer, then what the analogs are saying right now for a cold winter won't be true. But if La Nina does end up on more of the neutral side here, or and the weak status at best, and this warm PDO up here, these warm waters over the Gulf of Alaska, if they take over uh, more than what you would expect, well, then you're going to end up getting this. All right, so it's a, it's a cause and effect right now. We've got to see what it does over the coming months. There's some signs saying it could be a cold, snowy winter, but there's also some signs of caution saying if this increases just a little bit more, we're going to get burned just like El Nino did to us last winter. So stay tuned for that. By the way, just for you snow lovers, there is some hope with this. Let me just show you some things. My top five analogs at this point are 5859, 8384, 85, 86, my top five rather, 93, 94, and then you've got these two over here. That's not five, two, three, four, five, my top six. Those are all on my list as my top ones. I think I threw this out whenever I did the maps because this one wasn't the best of the winters, if I remember right. Nonetheless, those were all winters that were uh, featuring fairly close ones uh, for us, folks. Look at how look at how big those snows were. All right, keep in mind about ten to twelve inches of snow is normal for around here. That's pretty normal right there. That's pretty normal. That was that was a bang up winter. So was this one. So were these two. All right. That's not to say these are going to come back again. If we end up with strong La Ninas, all right. Look what strong La Ninas do. This was a strong La Nina and it only left us 3.6. This was a strong La Nina and it only left us 4.4. These were strong La Ninas and we got uh, slightly above there to near normal here. These were some, this was a reasonably moderate, but we got a big total here, 26. But look, this was a strong La Nina, only left us 6, only left us 8. So you get the idea is the data is all over the place, but the stronger the La Nina, typically the less the snow that you see because the warmer it gets. The weaker the La Nina and the more neutral conditions, the better chance you have for the big snow seasons like this. 
So right now we can't really say. We just have to wait and see at this point. But like I said, the conditions are looking favorable at least for some colder weather. But let's moderate that with just a word of caution too because it could easily be warmer if La Nina takes over more than expected. We'll just have to see what do these modelings look like as we head into the next few months. Does La Nina decide, I think I'm going to go down into this territory down here and get very strong. That's the outliers right now. But sometimes the outliers happen. Keep that in mind. All right, again, you can go to southernindianaweather.com and get a little bit more of a preview about this. By the way, folks, I'm looking for a sponsor for our winter forecast. These winter forecast videos, especially when I release them in September, and then I release another one in October. Then I do a winter update in January to see how things are going. I release videos with those and blog posts with those. Uh, those uh, get outstanding numbers of views on them, folks. So if you are interested, the forecast videos last year for the winter forecast videos were reviewed 23,154 times on YouTube. And then 13,911 times the blog posts were read out of that. That's pretty good for only two or three blog posts and videos. So email me, southerninwx at gmail.com for some reasonable rates on sponsoring the winter forecast. Or, of course, there are all kinds of other advertising spots available. I'd love to talk with you about it. That's it for this early winter 2016-17 forecast preview, folks. Thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time.